last time I watched that scene in that film, you were all three stories high. I saw it on IMAX. Uh, it's, give us your, your, your observations about working with Mr. Nolan. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't be here tonight if I hadn't participated uh, with, with Killian as the uh, head of the acting department under the tutelage of Chris Nolan. There'd be no reason to have me here as a modern master because what have, what have I done for you lately? Um, and so, I mean, I think that if you're lucky enough to, to, to have someone see something in you that you're not even sure they're right in thinking you could do, it's this faith thing, you know? It's like he was so certain. I mean, Killian was a much easier decision to make. He's worked with him five times. You know that he's, he, could, he could carry this epic and really important story. But I was saying this last night, and when you're a visionary filmmaker, it means you can see things that other people can't see. And in this case, I, I think it was his faith in me. And then it was this just monastic and really focused education. And like, like here's how you make a proper fucking movie. <laughs> you know, I was like, wow. Um, so I wouldn't say I was mortified, but you know, Killian's only seen me on this last film, where I was like, if I'm not prepared within an inch of my life, I will probably evaporate. Whereas, you know, I'm not saying I had gotten it all lazy, but, you know, it was more like rolling off a log for the last 10 years or so, and you don't roll off logs around uh, Chris Nolan. So, um, it was just very exacting and very rewarding, and, uh, and I, I think it's probably the best movie I've ever been a part of. Did he present you with a lot of research and background about the, the, the man you're playing, or did you have to go digging? He did, but by the time I was done reading the script, I remembered that I, I'd read in several other books that were cross-referencing him, and he was always kind of a, you know, a behind-the-scenes guy, but he'd been a lifelong public servant, so I just really leaned into, and he had said, too, he said, basically, Killian's Amadeus, He's, he's Mozart, you're Salieri, get into it. And I was like, well, I usually play Mozart. He's like, yeah, well, <laughs> Killian's the guy for this, trust me. Whole fucking movie's about him, and you're playing the bad guy. And I was like, yep, sounds about right. <laughs> and it turns out that there was plenty of uh, historic animosity to draw on. And I also just thought about every time that somebody had embarrassed me in public or I felt less than or looked over or walked past or not acknowledged or on the outside or people didn't know that my voice or opinion mattered or whatever. And it was kind of like less than zero. I remember in less than zero, I thought, will any son ever really connect with his father? That's what I was thinking about on the, on the tennis court. And this time I thought like, can humanity survive all these petty grievances that these egotistical usually men have with each other. And I was able to just go, well, let's play this shadow side of it. And that's where, how Straws was kind of formed. And it wound up being a, uh, a great learning experience. Spencer Tracy said, as we've all read, uh, movie buffs all know, Hit your marks, say your lines, tell the truth. Do you have anything to, to contradict or add to that? First of all, never disagree with Spencer Tracy. Uh, yeah, and like, if you're doing much more than that, you're thinking, Susan will sometimes say to me, oh, hi, are we putting a hat on a hat again? <laughs> and I'd be like, hey, two hats is cool. We can wear one one way. One um, this was really all, uh, sometimes the weirdest lesson is, is like, do less, feel more, like, get out of your head and just do the, you know, just, just like, do what's in front of you. And also, like, listen, you know? It's not like I went out there and said, well, this Chris Nolan guy is not very bright. I'm gonna have to really take the reins here, you know? Listen is crucial, isn't it? 
Yeah. And it's something that you've said before too, which is at our best, this, this weird cultural thing of making you know, films and TV, is like we're communicating something and hopefully we're communicating something that transcends the period of the film or the characters were talking to these deep, you know, subconscious aspects of ourself. And I'm still studying the implications of what I think Nolan, being a visionary filmmaker, I think his vision was like, we're in that 80 year period again, these four generations where we tend to almost destroy ourselves. And I think that intuitively his timing for making this film is what you see, you know, the great artists also give us something that's a contemplation of something that is urgent in our culture. So that's what he does. That's a great summing up, which means it's my turn to reintroduce Rob Lowe and the aforementioned Killian Murphy. Oh my God, together? Your award. Aren't they a handsome couple? All right, you give it to him. I'm sorry, I wasn't clear on the blocking. Test out that speech, baby. All right. Um, I'm going to keep this uh, pretty short. First of all, as we all know, the, the, the missing integer in uh, any event is the audience. I really want to thank you for showing up. Thank you for giving me all this energy. It felt great. Speaking of modern masters, I mean, I... I, I really was re-reminding myself of your significance in our culture and what you've done from being a scholar to a writer to a critic to a host and just, um, again, your approval means the world to me and I appreciate that you feel like I'm in a good spot. And I feel like Shelly Field, he likes me. <laughs> um, I like that a lot. And I love his whole family. I was hanging out with him backstage. They're a cool bunch, um, you know, Rob is someone who has demonstrated so much to me and we've been able to reconnect lately and I went on his podcast and we're kind of talking about our origins, but he was the first one in my generation to say, guys, you know, there's this thing called stop and grow up and handle your business and be a good dad and be a good husband and enjoy the privilege of being able to work in this industry, which is why he's still relevant and why he still looks 27. And then, um, and Killian is straight man to no one. He is just, I think, beginning to understand by the reaction he gets when he comes to places that he is a fucking force of nature and we're gonna be seeing a lot more of him uh, in the future. That said, I just wanna let you in on a little something. My agents, uh, Andrew Dunlap and Phil Raskin, came up with me, and we got like, we've been looking forward to this for months. We got matching PJs, like we're gonna <laughs> hang out and stay up late. So this whole Santa Barbara International Film Festival, for us, this has turned into like, this is like party time. We had a great time. And uh, so I wanna thank that. And as always, I will never finish any thank you, even though she's probably just like, you know, getting ready to put the kids to bed soon without thanking uh, my, my dearest associate, Susan Downey. Uh, thanks for sticking it out. Love you. Have a nice eve. <laughs> <laughs>